from your heart chakra, from the center of your heart, you are the most conductive. There's the most electricity being broadcast in your body from your heart center. And that conductivity is associated with a signal. And individuals that are clairvoyant, they'll be able to see that there's a hue that pervades uh, the form of the human being, and they call it an aura. That same field, that signature, that frequency that's being given out by each person to another individual, they will say they can feel it. They can feel the vibration of this individual. They'll say this individual is, uh, has a lot of innocence, or this individual has a lot of passion, or this individual um, is very strong um, and, and enduring. This individual um, has a lot of grace and inner beauty. Um, all, all these characteristics are simply the labels we put on to uh, different chords of resonance that are being broadcast from an individual. Now, many individuals are aware of the law of measure for measure. The law of measure for measure simply indicates that uh, whatever signal an individual is giving off in their circle, they will attract complementary or likewise energy, measure for measure. Meaning, let me give some background for this. An individual soul will progress one way or another. The individual soul will either progress because they are proactive in their progression and their expansion, and they will grow to proactively control uh, the nature of their journey. Or there is a default mechanism whereby nature itself will continue to reveal to the individual lessons uh, about their inner truth. And many individuals will master these lessons not from uh, enlightenment within, but from the world of without, from struggling, from uh, perpetual frustration, from disappointment, um, falling into the same patterns again until the individual is humbled enough, the ego subsides, to the point where the individual is prepared to open up to a greater paradigm. And as the individual does so, what the individual is actually growing to is to remove enough biases to be able to come to terms with their eternal self and understand the nature of what it means to be eternal, the unconditionality of it all. And as the individual begins to converge with the divine that is within, in unconditional grace, that individual too will blossom to recognize the divinity that is latent within all of creation. And as well be able to witness it in its unconditional nature. And as the individual awakens to this scope of perception, the individual will then be better prepared to utilize the divine light that's imparted to their individual soul to co-create with the rest of their soul that is behind the veil or the rest of their soul that is in the past or in the future a more harmonious journey. Every individual is an angel. And you'll say, how can an individual be an angel? They're a soul. But the difference between an angel and a soul is that a soul is an angel within a free will construct. An angel is so connected to the truth that there is very little free will involved. A soul, on the other hand, is within 
a free will construct and has enough chaos and randomness or perceived randomness that surrounds them that they have the perception of free will and choice. And that perception of free will and choice, that virtuality, gives them authenticity. So that when they choose to love, that love is authentic. It's more authentic than when angels love. Part of being that angel is the, the consonant that every soul is an essential building block behind all of creation. And included in that is a power of a soul to create with the power of all that is divine to create uh, new possibilities to manifest these new possibilities in their terrain every human soul has this ability the problem is that the individuals are born into a world of polarities a world of contradictions and the soul operates optimally with the power of the divine in singularity. And so the soul is like a ping pong ball being ricocheted back and forth over the net. And until the soul is still, until it gets true, perspective the soul is not truly free to proactively access the unique cord of truth that has been imparted to that soul as a creator and that accessing that cord of truth is called by the mystics the I am it is the benevolence of the creator that is imparted to the individual soul with the full awareness that the soul is an extension of the divine will. In the fulcrum of that perspective, the soul has a potency, if executed properly, to color its world anew. More precisely, if I can get uh, a bit quantum here, your reality is reconstituted in each instant. And your molecules are vibrating in and out, indulating at all times. And the reality you experience is to a vast degree it is reciprocal to the energetic signature and beacon that you are giving off and as you raise the vibration of that signature you will begin to inhabit a world that is almost identical to the one you're experiencing right now but suddenly it's a world with more possibility. And this is what many spiritualists refer to as a switching to higher densities of consciousness. You'll notice that uh, in many of the religions they have um, traditions of when it gets to a certain point that uh, humanity is going to go through a portal and there'll be peace on earth and all these sorts of narratives. And, and these are uh, crude descriptions of what is a very subtle and elegant process. The individual, as they graduate, their energetic signature, in fact, awakens to be part of a different world. 
more precisely spoken, think of all the various U's as Q's, little marbles that are one after the other. And as you raise your vibration, the marble that's all the way in the back moves up a stage and all the other marbles move up one slot and inhabit a world with new, with less density of possibility and higher potentials. So as you redeem the karmic signatures of the you at the end of the line, everyone gets moved up to new possibility. The vibration is higher. Now you'll say, some days I feel like I'm on top of the world and some days I feel like I regress so badly. And the truth is that based upon uh, several factors, but especially what you are vibrating and what you are partnered with, you fluctuate between dimensions of your own reality. And in some dimensions of your reality, your relatives are difficult. Your companions at work are not accommodating. And in some dimensions of your reality, your relatives are genuine, engaged, and open to discovery. And your companions at work are good-natured and looking to assist. And they don't change. You change. It's simply the reality that you are taking part in based on the vibration signature of your soul. Now let's consider this for a moment. Let's bring forth uh, an analogy. And this will illustrate that how the nature of this is kind of like gravity. Gravity doesn't care why you fell out the window. If you fall out the window, gravity is going to pull you down. So it doesn't really relate to your intentions. It relates to your state of being. Let's say a soul in its younger age, ages, let's say age six to eight, goes through a very difficult event and gives off a profound, energetic cry, dissonant cry, feelings of hopelessness, feelings of pain, feelings of dissatisfaction, feelings of abandonment. At its core, that release is an energetic broadcast. And what that broadcast does is it broadcasts through the lens of the soul instruction for more of the same. Measure for measure. Now, not only does this transpire, but the residue of that expression and release leaves an impression upon the halo of a person's soul, upon their natural broadcast, the natural resonance of their truth. As an individual begins to graduate in their consciousness, they will wrestle free the residue that is upon their soul. And the residue will be broadcast very strongly in its release to nature and bring forth 
measure for measure, more of the same. And so the individual will be confronted with a dynamic that is not identical, but identical in the feeling that it drums up. And the individual will be granted an opportunity to receive it from a very different space and impress upon it a much more objective and graceful reception. In that regard, the individual will be able to upgrade or transform the residue of that powerful emotional release. In spirituality, the more emotional the release, the more powerful it is to manifest something in your circle. And th this is why the religions um, had such a tradition of ecstatic worship and uh, ecstatic chanting. And this is why the dark arts, they had such a uh, long-standing tradition of utilizing sex as a, 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 a tool, as a technique for summoning uh, manifestation. Because an individual engaged in sexual activity uh, is released from the normal bonds of consciousness and enters into um, a stronger emotional expression. Emotion is pivotal uh, for proactive techniques of manifestation. The law of measure for measure will ensure that you will attract measure for measure what it is you put out. Many uh, well-intending good individuals say, but I'm putting out so well and I, I'm so well and why, why, why the difficulties, why do they keep arising? And it's similar to if you have a soup that is burnt on the bottom and the, the more the soup boils, the higher the flame, the more the burnt aspects will float to the top for you to fish them out. And it's similar in this way. So ultimately the individual will be revisited by emotions past in one incarnation or another. And their job is to transcend the impression that was initially imposed upon it and uplift it to one of grace, where one can recognize the benefit in going through this, the ultimate benevolence in it, um, how it will enhance one individually or how it operates to enhance the collective. And from that perspective, the individual will broadcast a aha, a clarity from a very high emotional peak that will transcend the linearity of their time and will go back retroactively to the point of the initial emotional incursion where things went sour and retroactively nurture and reset the interpretation of how that event was received. And as they do so, the individual will suddenly take a quantum leap spiritually. Because all the drag that was being fed perpetually from that different space and time, dimensionally, flowing one into the other into the other, that has been shifted and mitigated. So there is no drag. So with less drag, the propulsion is that much more fluid. And so the individual experiences a quantum leap in spiritual attainments.
Mama.